morning, everybody. I'm Josh Kanner. I'm in charge of analytics and AI for Oracle Construction and Engineering. I uh, actually came in yesterday from Boston. I feel like I should mention this on the Acela. Um, amazing train station. The Moynihan is awesome. It's a great example of what we can do well in our industry. Um, I've been in construction and capital project technology now for almost 19 years across a whole bunch of different technology waves from cloud to mobile to now AI. And I'm really excited to be able to talk to you about this newest wave, AI, and how it can impact how we can deliver projects consistently well across our industry. So let's get into it. I only have 20 minutes, but I think I, pre I prepared like an hour and a half of material. So I'll apologize in advance. Um, I'll be around though if you wanna ask questions about AI. Um, at the end of the day, like any technology in our industry, it's gotta work. Uh, and it's got to be, you know, make us better at our jobs, uh, delivering with uh, on time, with quality, safely, and uh, at the right cost. All right, so let's get into it. So why is AI a hot topic? Well, um, there's this thing called ChatGPT. Uh, it came out, and it was the fastest product to hit a million users in the history of the internet. It hit it in three days. Since then, the uh, Twitter spaces thing, or whatever it's called, blew it by it, but then retreated. So ChatGPT is still the fastest product ever. There's a phenomenon out there uh, that I call the pincer effect of AI with ChatGPT. The pincer effect is we're getting told about it by our uh, bosses, right? So there's the boardroom. Hey, what are we doing with generative AI? I see it everywhere. That's one, one part of the pincer. The other part of the pincer is our kids. I don't know if you guys have this happening, but my kids use ChatGPT for their homework. So all of a sudden, we're stuck in the middle. And we're saying, well, what the heck is this, and how can it be useful in our, in our industry? Uh, and the answer is, it can be very useful, as we'll show in a second. Another reason that AI is on everybody's minds is it's all over the press, and there's this existential you know, threat. I'm going to talk about this a little bit later, but is AI going to replace us? Is it going to, I mean, uh, it's particularly in knowledge work, is it going to help us? Um, as Brian mentioned, we at Oracle have the perspective that AI should be an assistant, that it can help you in your tasks, can help all of us actually drive towards success, maximize the chances of success in the delivery of our capital projects. Another reason uh, AI is in the news is that there's a whole tech wave of investment going into it. Um, this is a little dated, but Oracle, back in October, we had our best quarter ever because we deliver AI services through our products. I'm gonna come back to this in a second. Oracle isn't just software like Primavera or Unifier or Textura. We're a huge corporation that has massive investments in AI happening at the corporate level. Last but not least, AI is important because it helps with decision support and it helps us do our jobs. And on the decision support area, if you look at surveys, if you ask around, if you think about the executive teams you work with, it's on everybody's mind. This is a survey showing that 83% of execs, when they were asked by KPMG within the capital projects uh, industry, said that predictive analytics, some way of trying to be less reactive and more proactive, 83% saw that as the number one trend happening in the next three years. So it's everywhere, our kids are talking about it, and it's also touching on a really important trend that's important to all of us, which is greater project predictability and greater effectiveness in how we deliver capital projects. This is the mission statement for Oracle. Oracle as a corporation, and uh, just by way of uh, background, I've been doing enterprise software for about 23 years now. 21 of those 23 are at startups. So I'm pretty new to the big company game, so it always it's kind of shocking to me to say that Oracle is a $300 billion corporation. The entire mission of which, by the way, has to do with data, uncovering insights for data. We're in the construction and engineering group but we're part of this bigger company, Oracle, that's all about data. And I think when you look in our industry, um, companies have different strengths. Oracle's strength is about data and analytics and AI. In some ways, this is you know, a great moment for us, and we're really excited to partner with the industry because we are investing at the corporate level. I'm gonna give you some specific examples of that in a second, particularly with regards to generative AI. Um, ChatGPT is just one option although it's kind of like the Kleenex of AI right now. Everyone just says ChatGPT, but there's actually a lot of different options out there for generative AI, and Oracle actually has invested in one, which creates really exciting opportunities for us within construction and engineering, because we get to use that tech. So I mentioned project successful project delivery. Having been working, with, working in construction delivery from a technology side for 18 years, 
and I'm sure you're all familiar with that chart that we've all seen, you know, time after time, declining construction productivity versus all non-farm industries declining over the last 30 years. Um, we all know that we have that we could we could uh, do a better job of maximizing successful project delivery. I'm really tired though of that slide. Declining labor productivity, it's just too broad. And as a data guy, as an analytics guy, um, I wanted more information about that. So I like to share the, the, like the next couple slides because it ties into this theme about how data can help us ensure project success. And maybe it's something um, you all can take away as capital project uh, delivery professionals for more insights. Um, this is a book that just came out. Uh, it's called um, How Big Things Get Done. It's sort of why, I sometimes call it why projects fail. It's a study of 16,000 capital projects around the world by a researcher from Denmark who actually moonlights as a capital, an infrastructure capital projects delivery consultant. So very relevant to what we do. Um, what he did is he looked at the drivers of capital project delivery across multiple different industry segments and found that if you take all of them, only 48% are on budget, only 8.5% are on budget and delivered on schedule, and less, and less than 1%, half a percent, are on budget time and meet the original scope as intended. It doesn't stop there, though. He actually goes in and then analyzes each capital project by type, and then, relevant to this meeting, to this discussion today, he actually drills in by, by actual ca uh, capital project uh, subsegment. So here you can get a feel for from bus to rail to airports to tunnels, ports, bridges, roads, average cost overruns. So this is on average, what's the cost overrun of a capital project in the infrastructure industry from 40 to 16%. And then in the tail, so if you're, it, one of his theses is that when you start, when things go south, they can go really south. And you see that in the data. I'm showing this not just to make the point that we have room to improve, if you get this book, by the way, I make no commission on this book. I just think it's interesting for us as practitioners. There's a ton of actual specific guidance in the book guidelines. Um, think of them as features that you can look at that improve the predictability and the outcomes of your projects. Features are the data that tell us whether or not we're on the right track. Features are at the core of what we're doing in Oracle for predictive analytics. And it's this kind of research that's starting to converge. In my work in this industry, it's been all about the digitization of data over the last 15, 18 years. We now have digital data, not just in the back office, but also from the field. It's giving us the opportunity to start using that data, maybe with AI, to help solve these problems. So I'm gonna now introduce quickly a framework for how you can think about AI. AI is this amorphous thing, right? If you saw that Business Week cover I showed you, it's this scary robot looking at a person, right? Um, AI though, and particularly generative AI, is really just the latest wave. It's the latest wave on this, we're sitting on the beach here as technology users, these waves are coming in. They've been coming in around the AI topic with AI innovations for the last 10 years. The actual breakthrough moment that is, you can think of it as the great, great grandmother or grandfather of what's happening with generative AI happened in 2011 when a deep learning based model won a competition called ImageNet, which is a competition between the best image recognition systems. And they found, holy cow, this deep learning based approach, which we can thank, by the way, video gamers for, because without video gaming, so thank your kids for GPU based compute, without that stuff, we wouldn't be able to do deep learning. Generative AI is just the most recent wave of AI. So it's important, I think, to be able to understand how AI can help us and to detangle or to take maybe all these different pieces of AI, the different pieces of the puzzle, and understand how they fit, fit together. Because AI isn't one thing. It has many uses. I'm gonna talk about the technology here and then I'm gonna map it to what we do on the construction and capital project side to specific processes so you can see how some of these techniques can actually help us today. So if you think of AI as a puzzle with a bunch of different pieces, there's what you can do with it, like risk management, you can automate workflows, you can generate materials, you can do predictive analytics on things like safety and schedule outcomes, and using a bunch of techniques, speech recognition, image recognition, natural language processing, 
predictive, now generative AI. A lot of these you may say, well, yeah, of course, I got that on my phone, right? Like, I always like to talk about the feature where if you search on your phone in your Photos app, if you type in the word, word dog or beer, I like beer and I take pictures of the beer cans. If you type in beer, you'll find all the beer cans there because that's computer vision running on your phone. It's been there for five years. A lot of people, like, we just have now become, grown accustomed to it. Well, generative AI is that next wave that we are going to be grow accustomed to. But how? So if you break out the pieces of the puzzle and you map what these AI capabilities enable, it um, becomes, a, I think, a little easier to understand because it's not the solution for everything. You have to map or understand um, what you want to accomplish. Hopefully this is useful. It's a way of thinking about how you can automate processes for individual contributors on the bottom left as one use of AI, all the way up to the upper right, where you may be using AI to help make better executive level decisions. Like, which of my jobs is at the highest risk of a safety incident? And therefore, where should I, where should I put my discretionary staff in terms of safety resources? Which project is at greatest risk for a delay and why? all based on the projects that I've done in the past, the data I've been collecting, as some of us have been now for decades, be able to use that. So if you think about this as a continuum, from the bottom left is an individual, let's say, authoring a memo or writing a human resources related me uh, uh, you know, performance review. That's saving that person five minutes, let's say, right? It used to take you so it takes five minutes to write an email. It might take five minutes to write an RFI or a project correspondence. Now it's that generative AI can save you that time. In the upper right, instead of saving five minutes, you could be saving $5 million because you're better equipped. You're, better, you're able to predict where a problem is going to arise before it happens and able to deploy resources, able to understand why that problem was going to arise and be able to solve it. So at Oracle, we're working along this whole spectrum from building AI into our products so that individuals can work faster, whether it's authoring memos or even generating schedules, all the way to the products that are near and dear to my heart, because um, I, come, I come from a safety background. Um, I'm sorry, Kenny, I, th I think I have seven minutes. Yeah, OK, cool. Um, so here's one way of, one way of looking at it, um, is if you map specific construction workflows, capital project workflows on the delivery side to these different areas of AI. Everything from writing a memo, summarizing a project, generating a baseline schedule, all the way up to prescribing remedial actions. There are AI tools today that can help us with these things. We've built a bunch of them at Oracle, and we're continuing to build them out. This is still pretty early days in the world of AI. Oracle's approach is to have a product we call the Construction Intelligence Cloud. You can think of that as being in the upper right. The Construction Intelligence Cloud has uh, the name of Advisor. So we call it CIC Advisor. Advisor helps you understand where your risks are in the areas of safety, schedule, and collaboration. Our goal is to be like the AI assistant that can help you get ahead of risk in those key areas of capital project delivery. And yes, we are using some of Blylevin's features as we start and build these out. Um, it's all about data science, and it's all about what actual data drives these outcomes. Um, on the, so the way we're also building it out here isn't theoretical. This is real stuff. So today, projects are running our safety analytics and predicting safety risk every morning. So professionals, risk professionals, know where to deploy their resources. On the schedule and collaboration side, we've built natural language models and are working on um, generative AI models that can actually look at the correspondence going back and forth between parties on projects and get a feel for whether or not it implies or predicts risk for the delivery of that job. It's really exciting. If you, some of the project managers I've worked with, you know, they, know, they say like, if I go into the trailer, in five minutes I can know just from listening whether or not this job is on the right track or not. I think you could say a thing about a project controls meeting, right? Well, what if we're able to train AIs that can be that assistant, that can help point out where those challenges are and then give specific recommendations about what to do? So I'm gonna finish with the, the, the latest and greatest stuff. So generative AI, which we're caught in that pincer move for, Oracle is now invested in a company that is, uh, you can think of it as a, a, 
a competitor or peer to chat GPT and OpenAI. This gets back to being in a $300 billion Oracle big company that can invest in these kind of, this kind of R&D. It's really exciting. So what we're doing in our team is we're actually working with generative AI to build tune models that are um, limited to only the data that a given customer has. We're able to fine tune generative AI models on top of Oracle's bedrock of security and privacy. It's one of the ways that the product that Cohere, as a, uh, that uh, Oracle invested in, Cohere, is different than the approach that OpenAI and ChatGPT took. Right? Our kids were telling us about ChatGPT, right? our bosses. Uh, Cohere is designed not as a consumer product. Its roots are in enterprise and data security. So that's why Oracle invested in Cohere. It's aligned with our commitment. Um, and I can tell you now, being at Oracle for a year, it is in the DNA of our company, our commitment to data privacy and security. Um, so people wonder, well, is AI going to replace me? Like, what's going on? Is this a risk? Um, I've been working on delivering AI systems to production in construction and capital projects for over eight years now. That's what I've spent the last eight years on. And I always like to show this, because I've done a lot. I've spent a fair amount of time in computer vision. You can still confuse a computer vision engine um, by showing, telling it to look for a chihuahua and showing it pictures of muffins. So I think we got a long way to go, folks, before we have to worry about the AIs replacing us, because um, it's got a long way to go. And there are plenty of examples of this. Uh, there's actually research shown that if you put like a few pixels on a photo, it like misclassifies a stop sign. People mess with Tesla like auto, autonomous cars all the time. You can like mess up a stop sign by just putting a few random pixels on it. So. Um, it's here, as a, it's here to help us, and it's here to help us on our journey. Last two slides. So um, each of our companies, organizations, is on this journey to make better use of data, um, whether it's Primavera data or Unifier data or any data in any system, actually, because we here at Oracle are committed to working with all the data you have, not just the data in Oracle products. We want to partner with you as a construction and engineering specific team with our products and with the depth and strength of Oracle to help you along this journey from gathering your app-specific data, combining it, and then using it to unlock some of the insights that I talked about, which we've been able to build through features not just from books like Blylevin, but from our own data science research with capital project customers like you guys. So um, I'll end with this. Um, we at Oracle uh, have this concept of AI being an assistant. We're here to help you. This is an example of an AI-generated photo, actually. If you've ever used any of these photo generation services, this, I gave it the prompt of a uh, photorealistic rendering of a friendly AI-powered robot looking, looking helpful holding a, holding a chessboard. It still looks a little weird, actually, but uh, it looked related, Brian, actually, to some of the robots you showed before. They're all in one weird robot AI family. So if you remember back, to Kasparov versus Deep Blue and that IBM moment. Remember when the Gary Kasparov lost to Deep Blue and it was this th the beginning of the end for chess? Well, I'll leave you with this thought. There are now AIs that help chess grandmasters compete in tournaments. It's a really interesting parable for us in our industry. We're going to be better. We're going to be able to deliver more, better, successful projects <laughs> with AI than we are without it. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today.